Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video, we're going to be continuing the level editor series. This video in particular is going to be talking about the setup of our editor and how we can get started. Our level editor will be designed for a top-down game, but you can take the knowledge that you're going to learn in this series and apply it to any of the different genres to make it work for your game. First, if you haven't already, download the starter project in the description below. And when you have it and open it up, it should look like this in front of us. The first thing I want to make note of is the room setup. I always have an initialization room, and inside this room, there's normally a single object. I really only use this room to set up my window found in the inspector properties and initialize any data and then move on to the next room. Let's actually open up the object in a game so we can see that we have some initializations happening. Inside, we have some global variables such as the debug mode, which will tell us whether or not we're able to debug certain objects. We also have a collision array that we'll be using for the tile map collision and also the player collision. Now, before we get to any of the code, let's take a second and talk about the plugins that we're gonna be using for this project. There's a total of two plugins, and the first one is called ssave. We're going to be using this plugin at the very end to save and load our levels. I actually created a video on this particular plugin. You can find that in the description below or at the bottom of the screen. The second plugin is a wrapper built on Dear I Am GUI. This wrapper is called I Am GUI GM, and it is the game maker version that allows us to create the user interface elements such as buttons, sliders, and inputs. If you're using a new version of game maker, these elements will look very familiar to you. Now, what I've done is I've actually wrapped up everything from that particular library into a new library, and it's included in the project, and it basically just allows us to make these elements easier so we don't have to start and stop each one. The benefit of using this particular library is we don't need to run the full debug information to show these elements running. Now with that out of the way, let's actually run our game and see what we're able to do right now. You can see that we can currently move around with our player and we can collide with the tile set. We can even press F1 to turn on or off the debug mode. And that's pretty much all we can do for now. So let's close this and get to the actual lesson. For this lesson, we're just gonna go over the user interface and how it's going to work. So let's go ahead and open up the object debug and we'll open up the create and step events. Once we've maximized the windows, you can see inside the step event, we have an if statement that checks whether or not we're pressing the F1 key. We'll take the value of our global debug, and then we're going to reverse it. So that means that if the value is false, it will be true and vice versa. Below that, we have another check to see if we are within the debug mode. So our debug mode is set to true. This is where we're going to draw the user interface using the plugins that I mentioned. The first thing that we're going to need to do is switch back to the create event and new up a new UI. At the very top, we'll say UI equals new UI. And now we need to call the init function on that UI. Once we've done that, we've initialized our UI so we can switch back to the step event. Now inside the if statement, let's actually tell the UI class that we need to have any updates happen. This is extremely important when dealing with this library, so you want to make sure that you always have the update somewhere within your step event. Now, let's get to the work on the first UI element. This is just going to be a sample, and we'll get to the real elements in a later episode. The first thing we want to do is create a new window. We'll use the UI.window command, and we're going to pass in the name of the window, and I'll just call this one test window. Now we need to supply a callback function to tell it what to put inside this particular window. So inside this window, let's create a new button by using a ui.button command. For the label, let's actually pass in a test button. Now, just like our window command, we also need to pass in the callback. So when we click this button, let's just use a show message and let's display I clicked the button to the user. Now let's make sure that we end the callback for the button as well as the window. Now before we can run our game, we actually have to tell the UI to draw. Let's switch back over and open up the draw graphical user interface event. Inside you can see we have an if statement as well. And in here, let's just use a UI.draw in order to draw the user interface. Now let's run our game. And when we press F1, you can see that we have a window pop up. I can minimize and maximize this window, and I can also drag it around. 
If I click on the button that we created, we get a nice little pop-up saying that we clicked the button, and this basically tells us everything is working fine with the user interface. Even if we press F1 on our keyboard again, the user interface will disappear, and we're left within our game view once again. So now, with that, we have the initial setup of how things are going to be built and the libraries that we're going to be using, so we can stop right here as the next episode will be adding more to the UI and actually adding the instances into our game view so that we can walk around and kind of play with them. I'd like to thank you for watching, and a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters in no particular order. Thomas, Mecca, Sudu, Victor, Game Maker Community, Midnight, and Matthew. Once again, thanks for watching the videos. Subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell if you want updates on when the next video for the series is coming out or any of the other videos that we're creating here. Thank you so much.